He's our guest. Okay, yeah. Our guest is here, and he's one of the coolest people in the Rogue Valley. He's been on the show many a time. He's one of my best, dearest friends, and his name's Tipo Varnado. What's up, brother? Hey, moody everything all the time, as I like to say. You, well, you sound good in my headphones. You're very clear and loud, so thanks for being here, dude. Oh, good. I'm glad. Thank you for uh, allowing me to. Well, I'm, um, tonight we're going to be putting Tipo on our, our notorious YouTube channel, which has got hundreds and hundreds of posts now, but there's nothing with Tipo, so it, tonight that changes. And we've asked Tipo to come up and do some of his best stuff, and it's probably kind of hard to pigeonhole your best stuff since most of it's your best stuff really i had no idea what to do oh really are you just gonna make this up as you go no i picked a few oh did you but uh yeah and that, that left a few of the others off did you okay yeah. well you know which ones are your like better ones you've done them enough times to you know you know how people react and you know telling people that you're going to be on here tonight we had a lot of mixed reactions all good but like one guy said, wow, man, when I hear t stuff, it really just moves me. And then it was really deep. Everyone was happy that you were coming on, man. And you've got a lot of fans. That's awful nice. Yeah. I, I appreciate every one of them. And I love every one of them. Yeah. And I remember I first met you. You were out at, was it Grants Pass? What festival was that? I think it was Hemp Fest. Hemp Fest, yes. Yeah, and I remember we were walking around, and I'm like, I love spoken word poetry, and I was like, hey, who's this cat? Let's watch him, and boom, and then we talked, and that was it. We became pals. We did indeed, and have remained so ever since. That was, gosh, six years ago at least. Yeah. Probably like, more than that. Six or seven, man, I think. Maybe, yeah. maybe eight, because I've been in the Valley almost nine years, and I think I've known you for about the first year. Yeah, probably about eight years, seven, eight years. Indeed. And it's been a pleasure, my friend. Thank you. It uh, has been my pleasure as well. Well, uh, let's get now started. That we've, now that we've stroked each other. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm going to say. I'm over here kind of like, all right. Uh. <laughs> oh, we love you too, Tracy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Tipo Varnado, my friend and the rogue poet, what do you got first for us tonight? I got first one called Emotion, which I know you've heard. And I just hope there's some people out there that haven't heard it. Anybody that's come to the Poetry Slam has. But it goes like this. I met with stress, and I heard him say, It's my job to beat you down each day. Keep you confused and your nerves to fray. When I get you down, down you'll stay. Well, I kicked stress right in the nad, said, Bring it, boy, if you got the guts. I dissed his name, and in addition... I laughed a while and just went fishing. I met stress, and he said to me, Your loss is my gain. Your sadness is my claim to fame. I need you to play my game. Well, I looked grief right in the face, said, You haven't a clue, not even a trace. You are the tool I use to move on. I am the king, friend. You are my pawn. Indecision, at a crossroad, said, You must carry twice the load. Your progress I'll block. Your confidence erode. Your loyalties I'll split. And one will be sold. Indecision, you can't touch me. You give me two choices, maybe three. Well, I dealt with stress and I dealt with grief. You too will fall like an autumn leaf. And I will carry on. Fear, unsought, has sometimes found me. Grounded, pounded, trounced me soundly. Damn near drowned a few around me. Panic, all but gagged and bound me. Well, afraid to die is no disgrace. When you've looked death square in the face, the greatest gift your life could give is you so that some others live. Dependence was at the opium den. I unhesitatingly walked in. He said, come on, we'll have some fun. I said, you had me at opium. Well, fun turned out to be obsession, leading me in hell's direction. Knowing I must turn the tide, I ditched that horse for a smoother ride. Well, I heard hate, and what he said was, come on, boys, let's make some dead. All it takes is me. And lead, bet I can hit one in the head. Why well, put hate where he could not see you 
through my eyes, though he might see me, and if he does, then so it be, for love has long since set me free. Yeah, I bumped into love in an open field, and both of us refused to yield. She said, I'll get you at some point. Hell, I just rolled another joint. But love has crept into my soul, shown me how I used to roll, and all the life the others stole. Love alone has filled that hole. Awesome, man. Now, Beautiful. Now, here at the station with Bloody and Tracy, I sit reflecting on all the words I've been dissecting, emotions I have been inspecting, embracing some and some rejecting. But I will not fear them anymore. I need not settle every score, and I'll not let them set me to reeling. For after all, they are only feelings. And me, I will carry on. Alone. Or maybe with someone. Yeah. That's actually one of my favorites. It is. What's the name of that? Emotion. Okay, yeah. yeah. Thank you for doing that again. That's one of my favorites uh, too, man. Thank you, man. Except for... except that I thought the ending was earlier. Sorry. Well, you know, that's where it ends on uh, the Brother C's, the Brother C's, the Brother Reed's CD. Okay. And so you've probably heard it there and thought that was the ending. You know, I do listen to that album, and that's exactly what happened. Subliminally, I thought that was the end. So, But part, sorry to step on your words there. Right, when we get our shout-out, too, in the poem. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought it was the end, man. That was great, Tipo. Thank you. Um, how long have you been writing poetry and doing reciting spoken word? Oh, I've been reciting it around for uh, about... 12 or 13 years uh, I've been writing for about 40 I guess wow. um, ever since I got well not ever since close to when I got back from Vietnam I, I found that it helps to uh, write your stuff down man your traumas it's write it out yeah, it doesn't have to be in your head anymore. It can be on that piece of paper that you put in the drawer. Yes, and then in our ears and hearts. Yes, sir, hopefully. Okay. Yeah, and it's better than, you know, bashing someone upside the head, which is what we... <laughs> yeah, I hey, quit, wait a minute, am I the only one here? Okay, never I quit mind. doing that when I started writing. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> he beats people up with words, man. Heck yeah. He's a writer, not a fighter. Uh, Tipo, what do you got next? I'm a poet, not a boxer, but I fight and never quit. Sorry, that's part of a different one. That's awesome. Excuse me while I take a... I'm kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> um, okay, this one's called Last Night. Last night, I stayed with someone who has loved me long and loved me true. Something selfish deep inside steals the love she cannot hide, and it makes of both of us the fool. It breaks her heart. And it breaks my rule, but for the moment, satisfies my longings and her saddened eyes. So we'll discuss which alibis we'll use to camouflage our lies. We'll talk of how and where and when we can rendezvous again. And she'll pretend that she's my wife, and I'll pretend I'm living life being loved by only you. Last night, I stayed with someone new, a longtime friend. You understand. She held me close as I've held you. A sort of friendly one night stand. It felt so right to be with her. We talked of many things. Southern ports and winter sports and she strummed the guitar strings. We felt so very comfortable as together we lay there. My shoulder was her pillow. Softness was her hair. Last night, my ears heard different sounds. My eyes saw a different sight. My heart, it felt a distant tug. We dozed off in the night. Then suddenly I leapt awake and for a moment had to wonder, where was I, for heaven's sake, and whose spell was I under? For I know the fragrance of your hair, the feel of your skin. It was not you beside me there. And I dozed off once again. Last night, I touched another heart. 
It was that of a friend. You know, it's funny how one thing will start and something else will end. Yes, and I, I want to say that uh, Steve Westkirchen wanted to shout out. Um, he's listening. And Tipo, love this dude. He says, um, also, Tommy Hiley. He also enjoyed uh, your reading. And who else? Somebody else said something here. Daniel, I, know, I know there's three of them. Daniel King also said something I can't repeat other than I love Tipo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right on. Well, that's really so, cool, guys. Thanks for tuning in tonight, man. Yeah. We appreciate all of you. You are listening to KSKQ, of course. And I must say, any views or opinions expressed are solely those of the host and guests and do not necessarily represent those of KSKQ. It's KSKQ's mission to produce community radio that empowers the residents of the Rogue Valley, builds sustainable and resilient communities through the exchange of ideas and the celebration of cultural diversities. You are listening to the Church of Rock radio show with our guest, Tipo Varnado, a.k.a. the Rogue Poet. And uh, what do you have next, sir? Depends on how many more you're going to give me. Well, another one or two. Uh, two That'd be more? great. Yeah, yeah I'll, okay. I'll, maybe a couple more. Yeah. All right, I got them for you right here. That's awesome. This one's called PBR. That's not professional bull riders or Paps Blue Ribbon. That's patrol boat river. Ah. All righty. Cruising up the river, blinded by the calm. Banana leaves and Tarzan vines, the ever-present palm encroaching on the waterway, hanging overhead. Rubber trees and orchids make the jungle green and red. Hooches standing high on stilts, open window, bamboo door. The dugouts and the sandpans dot the muddy shore. Patty's choked with sprouting rice. Eddie's choked with foam. His eyes fixed on the river's bend, his mind fixed on his home. The skipper turns the wheel to avoid a floating log. A deckhand motions to reveal a thick descending fog. The skipper turns the wheel again to skirt a silty bar. The smell of diesel permeates life on the PBR. The radio spits Morrison. A deckhand sings along. The end. Tapping feet and finger snaps bring on a momentary lapse. The fog begins to shroud the craft. Lookouts posted bow and aft. An eerie silence does descend as they approach the river's bend. Then shots ring out. Glance off the hull. The skipper hits the throttle full. A deckhand darts and ducks his head. The air is rich with singing lead. Twin sixty spray the fog-draped trees. A deckhand drops down to his knees. Rounds have pierced his chest and neck. His life is drained out on the deck. As he fades, his mind does roam. His final thoughts of wife and home. And though they know their friend is gone, his shipmates still must carry on. The skipper stops the boat midstream. The sixties scour the jungle's green in hot lead search for enemies. Charlie fires back through the trees. With death so close and home so far, that's life upon the PBR. The deckhands know the regimen. The radio spits Morrison. Then quickly as it all began, Charlie's up and gone again to melt into the canopy. The skipper gets down on a knee to cradle, hug a fallen friend. The lookout scouts the river's bend. The radio spits Morrison, and no one sings along. The end. Wow. Bravo. Bravo. Thank you. Yeah, some deep, profound words there from Tipo Varnado. And for many years, uh, for a long time, Tipo was the slam master for the Rogue Valley Poetry Slam. And then he uh, passed the torch to Alex Potatoson, who was on the show recently and did a good job on yeah. the show. She was fun. She's awesome. Yeah. She came in and did some poetry. It was really an honor. And she had some nice words to say about you. And um, have you been making it to many of the, of the poetry slams these days? I haven't, but I, I plan to go to the next one. I had planned the last one, but uh, it just didn't work out. 
Well, you'll see us there because we're going to start going back to that event, too. Yeah, I uh, took a class on Tuesdays, but it ends just in time for me to yeah. get my baby down the street. Some to, tai, tai Chi to poetry. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to say, too, that uh, Doug Shields is also listening in and says that he absolutely just loves T-Po's poetry. So. Wow, lots of listeners tonight, man. Yeah. Good. And That's a lot of them good. tuning in because of you. So thank you very much. Thank you, guys. I think you got right. another one for us, right? I do, indeed. This one's called... This is another Vietnam one, but it'll make up for the last one, because... Yeah, because you, you made me cry. This, this, <laughs> this is on a happy note. Oh, good, because Tracy um. is crying over here. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, that's the real deal, man. <laughs> this is what we were going to do, what we were going to do. Nobody says going to do. <laughs> right. I'm going to. No, I don't. <laughs> extremely, extremely <laughs> anal. <laughs> we would build a raft, we said. From logs we cut ourselves. And we'd track the Mississippi's bed from the Missouri to the mouth. Yeah, we were going to build a raft. And we would float the Mississippi. And we would drink and smoke and laugh as we traveled the old muddy. Brother, when this hell is over and we get back to the world, we said, for a while, we'll just lay in clover. Then we'd follow where the river led. There was me and Harley, Danny and Cherry Ball. And Cherry Ball was actually David Ball from Eugene, Oregon. One of the few home bros I had over there. But we would talk and we would laugh. And the four of us would often sit together at night in a bunker on guard duty, talking about how far away was everything that mattered to us, aside from one another. And we seldom, if ever, talked about our feelings for one another. We knew how we felt, and it didn't require vocalization. We would die for each other, like a brother for a brother. Danny was from Lake George, New York. Harley from everywhere and nowhere but we would talk and as we sat and watched the sky blaze red over the South China Sea at dusk we would talk we talked about how we would all stay in touch and once the last of us got back to the real world we would all meet up in St. Louis we would boat out to a nearby island in the muddy where we would camp out for several days while we constructed a most sturdy raft Upon completion, we would stock provisions and launch. We would float the Mississippi to New Orleans, beaching only to gather more provisions. This was the plan, and none of us questioned if it would happen. Come morning, it was like, you be careful today, bro. We'll talk again tonight. And we would all go off to our own hooch or hammock to catch a few winks before we had to move out. Then one day Harley got orders for Thailand. I always wondered if he wanted to, if they wanted him to train rangers to kill effectively with hand weapons, but you know, I never saw him again. Danny left country. I'm sorry. A few weeks later I was in the back of a deuce and a half driven by Cherry Ball. Went from the rice paddy to the right of us. Two AK-47s opened up, fired from the hip, one by a woman, and they sent a noisy stream of tracer rounds out in front of the vehicle and slowly walked them into us. We all ducked as the round struck the truck. I was stunned, but unhurt. David Cherry Ball was struck in the shoulder and the head, but this this hell of a man refused to relinquish his position as driver, and he drove himself to the nearest med station at L.C. English, 15 clicks away. You know, I never called him Cherry again. Danny left country a few weeks before me, and once I left, although I tried to get a hold of the guys a couple of times, I, I never found any of them. I guess in a way, the real world turned out to be 
just another battlefield on which we each had to fight alone. But I'm confident, confident that those of us still living remember when we would build a raft, we said, from logs we cut ourselves, and we'd track the Mississippi's bed from the Missouri to the mouth. Yeah, we were going to build a raft, and we would float the Mississippi, and we would drink and smoke and laugh as we traveled the old muddy. Brother, when this hell is over and we get back to the world, we said, for a while, we'll just lay in clover. Then we'd follow where the river led. Beautiful. You're listening right. to Thank KSKQ. You Thank you. That's uh, the words of T. Poe Varnado, the rogue poet. Is that, uh, is that a fairly new one? Or is that not something that you've read? A couple of years old. Yeah, because I don't recall that one at a poetry slam. I know it's been a while since I've been to a slam. Uh, yeah, I think it was over the limit, over the time limit ah. to uh, be able to do it to slam. Well, that it was could have been, yeah. certainly a pleasure to have you on the Church of Rock again. Because I would have, I would have remembered that. I, I kind of do, but but I'm like, I love that though. Yeah, that was, it was beautiful, man. Yeah. Uh, do you have any um, things coming up, Tipo? Any any where you're performing or going to be appearing at? I don't. Right off. I'm waiting for my phone to ring off the hook soon. Oh, it will. Um, Usually, get all these offers at once. It seems like. Yeah, and there's a, all the three day. Music fests, they never get a hold of me to the last minute. Yeah. Hey, T, can you come fill in for some people? Boom, I'm there. All right. Well, thank you, T Poe. It's great to see you as always, brother. And uh, let's go have lunch sometime soon, man. Let's do that. It's great to see you both. Okay. Yes, and just one last thing uh, Debbie Blocker. Uh, in Texas. And, uh, yes, in Texas. Um, Linda, and also, is it. Oh, yeah. Hello to Lilu, who's listening. She and shout out on Facebook. Hello, Lilu. Yeah, I said Linda. And then also, um, I'm not sure of this person's name here. Can you figure? Do you know that? Hathaway. Yeah, Hathaway. Okay. I just I wasn't sure if that's, you know. Tipo knows Hathaway, I think. Oh, yeah. You never know if someone uses, like, some <laughs> r- weird ulterior, ulterior name on Facebook. So you, I wasn't sure. You meet sure. Hathaway, you don't forget him. Right. <laughs> I'm sure I probably know him, but I just wanted to make sure. Anyway, they all loved your poetry very much and all shouted out to you and to the Church of Rock. So Ooh. thanks for listening, guys, yes. and thanks for letting us know Wonderful. that you enjoyed our favorite Rogue poet and a lot of people's favorite rogue poet. Amen. Hallelujah. Thanks again, Tipo. Thank you both. I've noticed a number of peculiar incidents among the members of the student body. Don't blame us. All having to do with rock and roll music. We're just the Church of Rock.